So having the Bellman equations as a way to compute action values and uh, state values, let's actually compute them. How should we compute that? In a loop, of course. There are two algorithms that we are going to talk about now, value iteration and policy iteration. They are nothing else than a way to solve Bellman optimality equations for state value and action value functions, numerical. They converge when the optimal policy is reached. We start with some non-optimal policy, iteratively try to improve the values and then converge with the optimal for this set of states and action policy that we reached. Here is the algorithm for value iteration for estimating policy, which is optimal. There are a number of parameters. We will have a small threshold larger than zero, determine desired accuracy of estimation of the optimal policy. Then we initialize values for all the states with some defaults. Then for all states, except the terminal value of the state is zero. Here is the algorithm itself. I will comment it and then show the implementation of it. So in a loop until the convergence limit is reached, do the following for all states, write previous value of current state, then and here the Bellman equation for state value function comes into play. For this state, we compute the new value function as following. First, we compute for all the next possible states, taking into account transition function, compute recursively immediate reward plus discount multiplied by a recursive value of next state values. Computed that for all possible actions, we select the maximum value that we can achieve. In this way, for this particular state, we update the value with the new one. Then we compute the difference between old values and newly computed values to decide whether we should stop. This algorithm outputs a deterministic policy such that policy or what should we do in each state is action that maximizes this condition. Let's consider sub real world problem and check how this problem is implemented there. An example MDP would be a student deciding what to do in his life. There are terminal states, there are transition between states, there are gamma decay coefficient, there are reward, there are function that returns a numeric word for state. This is a transition function. It returns a chance for the action to be taken for each state, set of actions that can be performed in this state. By default, it's a fixed list of actions, except for terminal state. For terminal, it will be none. We can get states from transitions, essentially just multiplying the chance of a transition and the transition function. Custom MDP is a graduate student's dilemma. Here how it looks like, appear in one of the states, the states is leisure and classes. The harder the class, the more reward we get for it. And we get penalized for being lazy, scrolling Facebook. And the set of action is different for each state. As you see, also there is a terminal state. You end with sleeping or studying. What is transition matrix? As I told you before, for each state, and we have four states, we have a chance that making a decision to move to that state, we actually receive it. So going leisure from Facebook will be 90%, going plus from Facebook will be 10%, and uh, quitting on the contrary. Then for the class one, going study from class one to class two is 60% probability, going to leisure from class one is 40% probability. And the same for rest. Not all actions available for each state. The actions that are unavailable for the state simply has no transition probability. So it is impossible to perform this action in this state. Here is the reward function. Reward function is simplified. It is addict. Since it's an episodic task, the reward being in the terminal state is zero. We record this state as terminals. We are setting our initial state being in the class one. We are creating the instance of MDP that I showed you earlier, we set the discount being 0.95. It will give an agent a pretty nice future perspective to consider his future actions. Now we're just checking what we have. We have the following set of states, one, two, three, four, five states. 
we have different actions uh, for different states. As I told you, due to the transition function, some of them are simply unavailable because they don't have a chance to transit. Then, um, here is section which are available in a terminal state, none. And here is the reward schema. Now, knowing our environment and uh, the goal, we want to maximize reward. We want to go to the final class and to graduate. We want to went like, from leisure to graduate. Here is the implementation of value iteration. Let's get back to schema to refresh it. We are looping over infinite loop, calculating value function, and then choosing a P based on a best action from the set of possible. Here we record all the states. Then uh, we read in the reward schema, the transition probabilities, and the discount. Then goes this infinite loop. Yeah, this one, the outer loop we perform the outer loop until delta becomes smaller than some predefined epsilon. It's a condition to interrupt the value iteration and return optimal policy, this one. The core is computing the values for each state. And it is very direct here. For each state, in all of the state, compute new value for each state by adding immediate reward. Here you have immediate reward and then discounted sum of future rewards. Uh, this is uh, for plotting to record how did it change. And then best policy, this row, the best policy, how should student act optimally? And we are selecting simple the indexes for the states with the largest. First, the policy is not optimal, but after some computations, it converges to optimal. And if we plot the values for each state over time, we see that on every iteration, the values for every state changes to some comparable values, based on which we can build our path of optimality.